Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 8 of the chapter Solutions. In the previous video, we discussed the solubility of solids in liquids and in this video, I'm going to tell you about the solubility of gases in liquids. Before we discuss the solubility of gases in liquids, let us take one example where it is really very critical and an evidence that there is uh, that gases do dissolve in liquids. All aquatic life on Earth depends on the dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide in the water. And it is the presence of this dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide which is responsible for life. So you can imagine how crucial, how critical and how important dissolution of gases in liquids is. Well, knowing that fact that yes, gases do dissolve in liquids, now it is important to know about solubility and how important is the solubility of a gas in that liquid and how does it affect the solution. So let us first take an example, just like, um, just like in the previous video, I told you about solids dissolving in liquids. I told you initially when we put the solid, the concentration of the solid starts increasing in the liquid till it comes to a certain point where the, the dissolution becomes equal to crystallization. And at that point, equilibrium is established and the solution becomes, uh, it becomes saturated. No, if you keep adding more solute to it, it does not dissolve. The same amount of solute will be separated out from it. A similar situation is seen even in the case of gases. If you add a gas to a liquid, the same thing happens. The gaseous molecules collide with the molecules of the liquid. And when they collide with the molecules of the liquid, they enter the intermolecular spaces between liquids. And you can imagine this process in that case, in the solids, we call it dissolution. In this case, you could like, um, I mean, liken it to uh, condensation. It is as if the gas which was present, the moment it turns, it touches the liquid and enters it, it turns into a, a liquid. At the same time, there are molecules from the liquid which also escape as gas. So an equilibrium is established. Now that much we know. Now let us take an example that we have a liquid and uh, in a jar and there is a frictionless piston which is present in the jar. This frictionless piston is such that there is the weight on it and the vapor pressure of the gas which is present, the air which is present above the liquid they balance and the piston is kind of floating over the um, over the gas and then you add the weights and when you add the weights what happens the piston starts moving downwards and imagine that the piston moves down half the way that is this volume that was which was occupied by the gas is now reduced to half what will happen as a result of decreasing the volume what will happen to the gas why am I saying gas? Because nothing is going to happen to the liquid. The liquids and solid state are not affected by uh, pressure. We had studied about this, that what is the effect of pressure? What is the effect of temperature on uh, solubility of solids in uh, liquids? And I told you that in the, case, in the case of temperature, yes, it does affect the solubility of a solid in a liquid, but pressure does not affect the solubility of a solid in a liquid because both the solid and the liquid states are incompressible. So when you decrease the volume, as a result of this, the same gas molecules which were present are now present in half the volume. So the concentration of the gas mol gaseous molecules here, it becomes doubled. If the volume is reduced to half, the concentration of the gas molecules becomes double. And at the same time, the number of collisions with the water or the liquid uh, surface also increases. And the greater the number of collisions, more molecules will start entering the liquid state. And therefore, the solubility of the gas in the liquid will increase. What is solubility? It is the concentration of a solute present in the solution. And here the number of molecules in the solution of the gas was less, but due to greater pressure, the number of molecules in the solution is greater. Therefore, it means the solubility of the same substance has increased, of the same gas has increased simply by increasing the pressure. Now, I just took this example. I have water in this glass and imagine this to be the piston which is kind of floating here. Now, the atmospheric pressure pushing it from up to down is equal to the pressure of the gas which is present inside the jar and is pushing it upwards. If I increase the mass 
on top and I start pushing the piston down and I reduce its volume to half, half of the volume occupied by the gas. What do I observe? I observe that the solubility of air in the liquid will increase because the number of collisions will increase and therefore the number of molecules enter the solution, entering the solution would increase. Now this was something, this relationship between uh, the pressure and the solubility of gases. This relationship was studied by two contemporary scientists, that is Henry and Dalton. And both the scientists came to the same conclusion that if you increase pressure, there is some relationship between the pressure and solubility of gases. So what did Henry say? Henry said that at a constant temperature, if you keep the temperature constant, the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas. The greater the pressure, the greater the solubility. Lesser the pressure, lesser the solubility. And at the same time, Dalton also gave the same, a similar statement which said that he concluded, Dalton concluded that the solubility of a gas in a liquid solution is a function of its partial pressure. Is a function of its partial pressure. What is partial pressure? In a mixture, when you take the, uh, uh, it can either be mole fraction or it could be in terms of pressure. So the partial, in case of gases, we take the partial pressure of a gas. So he said that the solubility of a gas in a liquid is a function, it is related to the partial pressure of that particular gas. Now if we imagine that uh, or if we describe solubility in terms of mole fraction, the greater the mole fraction, what is mole fraction? The number of moles of solute divided by the total number of moles of solute plus solvent. So greater the number of moles of solute or greater the mole fraction, it means more soluble is the gas. So if we take solubility in terms of mole fraction and if mole fraction represents solubility, then mole fraction is represented by X is proportional to P where X is the, uh, is the mole fraction of the solute and P is the partial pressure of that gas which is the solute. And Henry, he gave his law and according to his law, the equation that he gave was that P is equal to KHx, where P was the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase and the a, no, sorry, X is the mole fraction of the gas in the solution and KH was known as the Henry's law constant. And he found that the Henry's law constant depends on, is different for each gas. Each gas has its own Henry's law constant and this value just as all uh, liquids have their own boiling points similarly the KH or the Henry's law constant has a specific value for every uh, gas and therefore it we say it depends on the nature of the gas and since he said that pressure is directly proportional what he had said was that the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure. So pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction which is solubility and KH was the constant. That was the factor by which it was proportional. So if we drew a graph between pressure and mole fraction, since they are directly related, if pressure is more, X should be more. Then for any gas, we will get a curve like this, right? And from this equation, what else do we understand? That if the value of KH is greater for any particular nature of a gas, what will the value, how will you understand how soluble a gas is just by looking at, its, at the value of its KH? The pressure, if it is kept constant for all the gases, then if pressure is the same and the value of KH is high, then to have the same pressure, the value of X should be low or mole fraction should be low. So what does this mean? It means that all those gases which have higher values of KH will be less soluble or have less solubility in liquids or water. So the greater the value of KH, lesser, lower is the solubility of that gas. That is what we understand just by looking at the value of KH for a gas. Now, let us come to the second effect, the effect. So in the case of gases, solubility of gases and liquids, the most important factor is pressure and temperature also plays a role. So before we come to study the 
pressure in more details, let us first discuss a little bit about the effect of temperature. The effect of temperature is similar to the effect of temperature that you saw in the case of the dissolution of solids and liquids. The dissolution process in solids and uh, solids in liquids was that if the process is endothermic, it could be endothermic or it could be exothermic. And uh, the increase of temperature always favors the reaction which is endothermic. And I also told you that the dissolution of a gas in a liquid is similar to condensation of the gas. And condensation is turning the gaseous state into the liquid state. And it is always exothermic. Condensation process is always exothermic. So what does it mean? When you increase the temperature of a gas or of a solution that is the liquid, the dissolution of the gas in it will, will it be assisted because it is an exothermic process. So it has to give out heat and the solution already is getting hotter and hotter. When you add more gas to it, would it dissolve readily or would it try to escape because dissolution is an exothermic process. It means according to Lee Chatelier's principle, this reaction would not be favored. So as you go on increasing the temperature, since dissolution of a gas is an exothermic process, the solubility of the gas in the liquid will decrease with increase of temperature. I hope I am clear uh, about this. So let me just read this again. Dissolution of a gas is like condensation. So it is an exothermic process. So according to Le Chatelier's principle, an increase in temperature will decrease the solubility of the gas. Do you know, this is the reason why when the, if you have an aquarium, during the summer months when the water gets warmer, the fish start dying. The rate of fish dying in your aquarium increases when the temperature goes up. Because the aquatic life, fish and all aquatic life, they like lower temperatures. And the reason for their liking lower temperatures is simply a, uh, I mean, a question of their survival. They would survive only if there is enough dissolved oxygen. And when the temperature goes up, the dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide becomes less. And since there is less oxygen and carbon dioxide, the aquatic life cannot survive. And that is the reason why fish, they prefer colder temperatures. Having done that, let us now move to the applications of Henry's law. Where do we see these, the application? How do we see, how do we use this information that when you increase pressure, the solubility of a gas increases? In the case of soda, that is Coca-Cola, Pepsi, whatever you drink, all sodas, in soda bottles, we dissolve the carbon dioxide in the soda, soda bottle under pressure. And that is why when you have these soda bottles, they are airtight. And the moment you open the bottle, the air, it escapes out as fizz, so the dissolved carbon dioxide, the fizz in the soda bottle is because of the carbon dioxide which has been dissolved under pressure. And now let us also see what happens to the fizz, what, let, us, let us see the effect of temperature on it. You must have noticed that uh, a Coke or any soda tastes better or has more fizz the colder it is. But the warmer it gets, if it is not refrigerated or if it is not chilled, the cold drink is kind of flat. Why is it flat? Because the solubility of the carbon dioxide at a higher temperature would be less. So the moment you open the bottle in a warmer, uh, at a warmer temperature, the carbon dioxide will escape and you will be left with a flat drink. And that is why you see the effect of temperature also on the cola. So the first application of Henry's law, th that is effect of pressure is, under pressure, we dissolve more of carbon dioxide into the uh, soda into the liquid and what is the effect of temperature there the higher the temperature lesser the solubility therefore the soda would be would lose its fizz at higher temperatures the second application of uh, henry's law is where scuba divers you know scuba divers go underwater and they have an oxygen tank with them when they go uh, swimming underwater and it is a situation like this, you know, when you go underwater, you were at one atmospheric pressure, but the moment you go inside water, now you have tons of water over you. So the pressure has increased far, far more. And under that pressure, when you go down into the, into the uh, water and you are at, let us say, you're, you go quite deep into the sea, at that point, the pressure of the water is so high and what will happen as a result of that? The oxygen tank is still supplying the same oxygen and due to the pressure, the oxygen is compressed. 
and when oxygen is compressed the amount of oxygen that starts going into your into your blood will be far far more now that is fine as long as you're down there you're doing your work you're good but the moment you've come back and you come back into the atmosphere that is used to come out after the scuba dive what happens you come back to atmospheric pressure which is so much less than the pressure inside the water and as a result of that what happens the air the dissolved excess dissolved uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood it starts it starts bubbling out it starts coming out and these bubbles they cause in the arteries they start or in your blood vessels they start causing problems and it's a very painful condition it can even cause death and the problem is known as bends so people who are scuba divers they usually they do suffer from they can suffer from bends so what is the solution how do we handle this situation we do not want that effect on uh, on the divers so what is done in order to avoid bends in scuba divers the oxygen tank is we add an inert gas to it helium is added to it and helium 11% is added nitrogen 56.2% and oxygen is 32.1% when you do that the inert gas nullifies the effect of the uh, excess of air present inside the bloodstream and avoids bends so the third application of henry's law is that when people go mountaineering they go to high altitudes the atmospheric pressure decreases at higher altitudes even paratroopers who jump from parachutes or whenever you go to high altitudes the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is less and now since the amount of oxygen is less and the pressure is less lesser the pressure lesser the solubility of the gas so the oxygen that you're breathing in the air that you're breathing in will dissolve less in the blood as a result of which what will happen the amount of oxygen that you that you need will decrease you will not get enough oxygen and that can lead to another medical condition of a scarcity of oxygen in your uh, bloodstream and that is known as anoxia so you could have anoxia when you go up on a, a mountain in that condition also you may have to carry an oxygen cylinder with a higher concentration of oxygen so that you could perform even at those uh, pressures at a lower atmospheric pressure so this was henry's law and um, how Dr. dalton spoke about it and it was i told you about the solubility of uh, gases in a liquid how pressure and temperature affect it and with this i'll finish this video in the next video i'll do a couple of uh, practice problems based on henry's law and then we'll move ahead with our chapter so if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now